Hello and welcome to Bite Size Med. This video is on some different pressures through circulation. So from physics, you'll remember that the pressure is the force that something exerts per unit area. And it's the same thing here, just with blood exerting force on the vessel wall. So there's different pressures in different vessels, like there's arterial pressure, capillary pressure, and venous pressure. First, let's look at arterial pressure. The cardiac cycle has a systolic phase and a diastolic phase. Simply put, during cardiac systole, the ventricles contract, and during diastole, they relax. During systole, when the left ventricle contracts, it pushes blood into the aorta under pressure, and this then goes through the systemic arteries. The pressure in the arteries during systole is higher and is the systolic blood pressure. The pressure during diastole is lower, and that's the diastolic blood pressure. Now these, like everything in medicine, are ranges, but it's usually taken as 120 systolic and 80 diastolic, just to make it easier. Now the difference between these two pressures, that is the pulse pressure. So it's the systolic minus the diastolic pressure. If we consider 120 and 80 here, it would be 40. There's also a mean arterial pressure. Now you'd think that would be the systolic pressure plus the diastolic pressure over two, but it's not that kind of mean. The duration spent in diastole is more than systole, so it gets more weightage. The mean arterial pressure is approximated as two thirds the diastolic pressure plus one third the systolic pressure. Remember that the pulse pressure is the systolic pressure minus the diastolic pressure. So the systolic pressure is the pulse pressure plus the diastolic pressure. So that makes this equation 2 thirds the diastolic pressure plus 1 thirds the diastolic pressure plus 1 thirds pulse pressure, or the diastolic blood pressure plus 1 thirds the pulse pressure. So that's the two ways this equation can be written. If you have some trouble remembering this, think of it like this. So we've got the systolic pressure, diastolic pressure, and pulse pressure. That's three pressures, so we're going to put three there in the denominator. And more for diastolic, so two for diastolic and one for systolic. That's our first equation. If we were to use just the diastolic blood pressure and the pulse pressure, again, more weightage to the diastolic pressure. So we'll take the whole thing, and the pulse pressure is our third pressure. So we'll put a 3 in the denominator below that. It's just different ways of writing the same equation. It could also be diastolic blood pressure plus the difference between systolic and diastolic over 3 because the pulse pressure is the difference between those two. So usually you can just remember one and you can get any other form of this equation from it. I hope that was a little helpful. Again, the mean arterial pressure is a range, and if we put in the 80 and the 40, that would give us around 93.3, and it's usually considered to be 100. The flow through circulation is the pressure difference over the resistance. So a drive circulation is the pressure difference or the pressure gradient. So what's the gradient between? It's between the left ventricle and the aorta, and the vena cava and the right atrium. So that's between the mean arterial pressure and the central venous pressure or the right atrial pressure. But since the central venous pressure is normally low, we'll remove that for now. Now what opposes flow? Resistance. Now the resistance offered by the vessels that are in systemic circulation, that is the systemic vascular resistance, or the total peripheral resistance. So the mean arterial pressure is the cardiac output into the total peripheral resistance. And these two factors can affect the mean arterial pressure. During systole, when the left ventricle pushed blood into the aorta, the right ventricle pumps blood into the pulmonary artery. That then enters pulmonary circulation. Pulmonary arteries are more compliant than systemic arteries. So for the same volume, if the compliance is higher, that means the pressure is lower. The mean pulmonary arterial pressure is around 15 versus the mean arterial pressure in systemic circulation, which was around 100. The flow is the cardiac output. It's the same in both circulations. So same flow, lower pressure. Therefore, the resistance is also lower than systemic circulation. 
So both pressure and resistance is lower in pulmonary circulation than systemic circulation. Arterial pressure can be measured with a sphygmomanometer over the brachial artery. And the sounds that you hear, they are called the Korotkov sounds. There are different reasons for why these sounds are heard, but one thing is it's believed to be due to turbulence. The cuff is inflated and the pressure goes above the systolic pressure. That compresses the vessels, so there's no flow. Now the cuff pressure is reduced slowly, and when the pressure goes just below the systolic pressure, that allows some blood to flow through. But it's a constricted vessel, so the velocity of flow is high because the diameter is low. That creates turbulence through the vessel beyond the point of that narrowing. This is noisy flow, and that's what you can hear, so that's the first sound. As the pressure reduces, the noises change in quality until the pressure in the cuff goes below the diastolic pressure. Now there's no vessel narrowing, so there's no turbulence, meaning there's no more noise. Now blood from the arteries goes through the arterioles and then through capillaries. Capillaries are where exchange takes place with tissues. Filtration and reabsorption happens here. The pressures responsible for this to happen, they are the starling forces. The hydrostatic and oncotic pressures in both the capillary and the interstitium. You can check out my video on capillary exchange linked in the description box below. Now blood from the capillaries enters the venules and then the veins. The pressure here is lower than in the arteries. The pressure of the veins closer to the right atrium like the vena cava that's the central venous pressure and that towards the periphery is the peripheral venous pressure. One thing that can affect venous pressure is gravity. So when standing, the venous pressure is higher in the legs and lower at the head end. Veins have a lower pressure because they're really compliant, and that's why they're called capacitance vessels. They are like reservoirs. Because of the low pressure, some veins can have valves. These valves ensure that blood flows in one direction only. Compression of the veins would push more blood towards the heart, and that's how physiological pumps work. Like the skeletal muscle pump, that's the calf muscle. When this muscle contracts, like by tensing or by moving the muscle, blood gets pushed in the direction of the heart from the veins. If these valves become incompetent, because of the effect of gravity, there will be venous stasis and varicose veins. And those are some of the different kinds of pressures through circulation. If this video helped you, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.